Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on Jesus. I woke up this morning with my mind. Walking and talking with my mind straight. Oh, I'm walking and talking with my mind straight on Jesus. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Yes, I am straight on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm singing and praying with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Oh, I'm singing and praying with my mind. Stand on Jesus. I'm singing and praying with my mind. Stand on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
God is always in the house. I am. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all. Truly, truly. It's different when you're at home. You can sit and watch it on the screen than being here. Because I can shout at home. I, I can, and I do. But here, woo! God is good. He is good. You know, I always have a problem not seeing with my glasses. Now I got tears in my eyes. Okay. Bless the word of God. I'm reading from Ecclesiastes 9, verses 1 through 4. For all this I consider in my heart, even to declare all this. <laughs> His word, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. No man knoweth either love or hatred by all that is before him. All things come alike to all. There is one event to the righteous and the, to the wicked, to the good and to the clean and to the unclean, to him that sacrificeth and to him that sacrificeth not. As is the good, so is the sinner. And he that sweareth as he that feareth an oath. This is an evil among all things that are done under the sun. That there is, in, is one event, excuse me, unto all. Yea, also the heart of the sons of men is full of evil. And madness is their heart, in their hearts, excuse me, is in their heart while they live. And after that, they go to the dead. There's only one boy, y'all. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. I have read for you Ecclesiastes 9, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord bless his holy word and those that hear it and those that do it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jesus, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the New Hope family. Thank you for the ministers on the grass. Thank you for Pastor Carter, Sister Carter. Oh, Father God, I just want to thank you. you. I give all the prayers and praise to my God. God, it's been a, it's been a hard week this week, but I got through. I just want to thank you. Pray for everybody that's sickening, sickness. Pray, I want to pray for everybody that don't have a home. My God. I pray for this nation. Yeah, Lord. Lord, we pray for this world. What's going on? I pray for this virus that we that we have. Can't seem to get rid of. It's getting worse. Dear Lord, I pray for my family. I pray for my mother. Yeah. My mother is down sick, but I pray for her. Lord. She's my best friend. Yeah. If I lose her, I don't know what I would do. Life wouldn't be the same. I love my mother. I know all you guys love your mother. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you again. All these, Lord, help me. All these words in your name, amen. amen. amen.
I stand on the word you spoken. I believe, I believe, God.
I believe. I believe. Next, we will have our welcome, and then we'll have our announcements, followed by our offering with uh, Reverend Kidd and uh, altar prayer with Reverend Trope. guests, if there be any today. We welcome you, we love you, and we want you, we're so glad that you decided to come out and share this day with us. And on behalf of our pastor, we hope that something is said or done that will make you come back and that will make you want to know more about my God, my God, yes. He's worthy. Just get to know him. Oh, taste and see. And to my New Hope family, I thank you. I love you to each and every one of you. And I just want to say that, Pastor Carter, thank you. Sometimes we don't know what goes on behind the pulpit or outside of that door. But Pastor Carter, to our Heavenly Father, uh, respects to my pastor, Pastor Carter, to the pulpit, Sister Carter, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We have um, the Sunday School Department will be having a teacher's workshop November 13th, 2021, at 9.30 a.m. All are invited and welcome to attend. If you have any questions, please contact Reverend Boone via in person or here at the church, 831-394-5118. Um, Hope to see you there. Hope to make it there. <laughs> no. We have a thank you card. Thanks, 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 a lot of thanks, and many thanks. I just can't thank you enough to New Hope Church and all involved in 
making my mom's home going so special. Yeah. There is so much joy in my heart knowing my mom is with the Lord. Right. I am proud to be a member of this church. May God continue to, continue to bless us. Alicia Gaines, Amen. Lynch, and family. Amen. 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 Thank you. These are your announcements for the week. May God bless you and keep you and have a wonderful day. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. God gave us a lot. And all he asked for is a portion. Heavenly Father, I stand before you, Father, with with full pockets. You have given me my portion, Father. And I pray, Father, as I give back, as we give back, give us a giving heart, Father, to give back to you what you have provided us. It's not much, Father, but you have given us our portion. You have fulfilled our needs monetarily and it is within our heart Lord that we give back to the kingdom what the kingdom has given us in Jesus name I pray father amen we are in the hands of the ushers and allow me to take this time out uh, you can give your tithing and your offering it says the NHBC uh, SeasideCalifornia.com, P.O. Box 834, Seaside, California. You can also give online, www.Giveify.com. Amen. Amen.
thank you, Father, for the monies that you have provided us. We pray thee, Lord, that the monies that we sent back to you, Father, whether it be a penny, a nickel, a dollar, or a hundred dollars, Father, you treat the same as you would any other person, Father. We say these things in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 It is time for prayer. Um, we already know that so many are in the need of prayer. We have so many sick. We have so many shed in. So much is going on in the world today. And it would behoove us not to pray for what is going on in the world today. Where would we be without Christ? Shall we pray? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we, your people, come before you right now. Lord, we know, Lord God, whose we are. We know, Father God, that if we believed on the name of Jesus, Lord, we are your children. And God, because we are your children, Lord, we are aware that we can come to you and God, we can ask anything, anything, God, that we need. Father, we are in need. We are in need this morning. We are in need, Father God, for you to touch those who are here. First and foremost, God, they took out the time, Father God, to come into your house to glorify your name, but also, God, to be changed, Father God. Lord, we're looking for a change this morning, Father God. Lord, we, we are not just here for show. We're not here for fashion, Father God, but we're here to uplift your name, Father God. We're here, dear God, for you to, Lord God, alter the things that are going on in our lives, God, the things that are going on in our friend's life, our family's life, Father God. Lord, we want you to move right, God. We want you to move right now. We want you to have your way, Father God. There are plenty, God, that are on the sick and shed in, Father God. Lord, God, there's some people who haven't seen outside and God knows when. But God, we are asking you right now in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, for you to touch them where they lie, Father God, where they stand this morning, Father God. Lord, whether they sitting in their chair, Lord God, under the sound of my voice, Father God, I'm asking you to touch them in their body. Father, I'm asking you to touch the people of God that are here today, their families, Lord God. Lord, all kinds of things are going on with them. Rebellion is going on, Father God. Hatred is going on right now, Father God. But Lord, we just believe on your word this morning, Father God, that all those things mean nothing because we are trusted in you, Father God. Your word that, comes, that doesn't come back void, Father God. We're trusting in it, dear God. Lord, we're asking you to move in a mighty way, Father God. Lord, we're asking you to touch in a mighty way, God. Someone needs your help this morning, Father God. Someone's mind needs to be changed, Lord God. Somebody, Father God, needs you, Lord God. They don't know where to turn. They don't know where to look. But there is a God who sits up high and looks low. My God, he looks at us with the love that no other can give this agape love that is so different and is so powerful that it changes it changes our hearts it changes our mind father god we thank you lord lord we thank you for jesus we thank you for the man of god we appreciate pastor carter this morning we don't just appreciate him today god but we appreciate him every day father god that we live we appreciate him every day god that he gets on his knees lord god 
Pray before you, God. Read your word. Study to show himself approved, Father God. Lord, the integrity this man has, dear God. We thank you for it, God. We could have any kind of preacher up in here, but Lord, you blessed us with Pastor Carter. No, Lord God, he ain't Pastor Franklin, but God, he is filling those shoes, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, for him filling those shoes, God. I thank you for Sister Carter, who stands by his side, dear God, who helps him along the way, who encouraged him, who encouraged us as the people of this church, Father God. We thank you this morning, God, for all that you do, dear God. Lord, I thank you right now, Father God. Lord, again, I'm asking you, Lord, to touch each and every one here. Father God, we're going through, Father God. If we haven't started the journey of going through, God, we're in the middle of it. And if we ain't in the middle of it, we're trying to come out of it. But God, we're asking you to have your way. Lord, have your way, Father God. Have your way upon us. Have mercy upon our souls this morning, God. God, Lord, we thank you. Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. Touch the elders of this church, Father God. The shoulders that we stand on, who teaches us, Lord God, how to live this life, Lord God, that is in Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for it everything that you do. Lord, just bless this church, Father God. Forgive us of our sins, Lord God, so that everything that goes forth today, God, will be done to the glory of you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In the matchless and mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
that you know my name. We are grateful. You looked beyond our faults and you saw our need. Saved us through the shed blood of your precious son, Jesus. Sealed us by the power of your Holy Ghost. Gave us promises in your word that you would never leave us nor forsake us. Promised us that we couldn't walk away, that we couldn't be put out, we couldn't be kicked out. But you sealed us. And so we are ever so grateful. Forgive our sins, O oh God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Have your way even now. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. amen. From Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter and the fourth verse. I, 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 I want to say it's so good to see you, Alicia. God bless you. God bless you. We continue to pray for you. So wonderful to see you. God bless you, Mark. Good to see you as well. Um, just one reminder, uh, Joy, Deaconess Joy Bryant will be going in surgery on Thursday. I, I believe she's having hip replacement on Thursday. So we want to pray for you, uh, Joy. I had that surgery, and the Lord is going to take care of you. Thank God for doctors, but the Lord gonna take care of you. Then also a reminder that the service for Thurman Lewis is gonna be this Thursday at 1 p.m. here at New Hope Baptist Church. And then I want to say congratulations to my grandson, Micah Carter, celebrated his 11th birthday yesterday. So thank God for that. From Ecclesiastes chapter nine, verse four. We find these words. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Our theme for this morning's message is, it's good to be alive. How many know it's good to be alive? So listen, if we had to choose between being a lion or a dog, I believe most people would choose to be the lion rather than the dog. If the animal kingdom came together and had a vote on who was the more respected creature of the animal kingdom, I'm convinced that most animals would choose the lion over the dog. Yet our text says that a living dog is better than a dead lion. I firmly believe that the lion would be given more respect than that of a dog. But a dead lion is a dead lion. And a living dog is better off than a dead lion. How many know that you should want to be a living dog rather than a dead lion? <laughs> if you don't know Christ, since God has given us life and it is he who keeps us alive, we are to appreciate the life he's given us and use it to honor and glorify him. But the problem is that most people spend their life only to please themselves, not to please God. But Paul says the Christian should have a different mindset than those of the world. Or in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And so, so Paul says that because of Jesus, he has life, not only physical life, but everlasting life. And because of this, he lives his life to please God and not man. I firmly believe that most people would desire to have what they consider to be a good life. 
For most people, a good life is based on the accumulation of money and property and earthly possessions. During the course of this pandemic season, many people who were living what they felt was the good life lost their jobs, lost their careers, lost their businesses. Many people lost their income stream, and as a result of this, it caused many who were living what they considered a good life to lose their home, lose their cars, lose their property, lose their good life. And they found themselves now in a situation they never thought they would be. Down in the south, there were storms and floods like they've never seen before, where people who were living the good life lost everything they owned and found themselves in a situation they never thought they would be. On the East Coast and even in the Midwest, there were terrible hurricanes and tornadoes, sometimes appearing out of nowhere, where people who were living the good life lost their homes and property and their possessions and found themselves in a situation they never thought they would be. On the West Coast, California suffered through the worst fires in its entire history. There were terrible fires that swept through various regions of the state and burned up homes and property and possessions of people who were living the good life and they found themselves in a situation they never thought they would be. In all of these situations, lives were lost. But for many who lost all their possessions and property, thank God, at least they still were alive. There are some definite advantages to being alive. And how many know where there is life, there is hope? Our theme today is, it's good to be alive. Especially if you have not got your house in order, for while the blood is still running warm in your veins, you have the, got the opportunity to get it right with the Lord that your living will not be in vain. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you go. This verse tells us that we won't always be alive, and that whatever you need to do in your life, you better get it done while you are alive. Amen. While we are alive, we need to do our best to live our best life because there is no more life in the grave. Now, the question is, what do you consider your best life? Because if your best life is not on the same page of God's plan for your life, you need to rethink how you're living your life. Well, most people are preoccupied with the accumulation of things, yet the Lord tells us that's not where our focus needs to be. The Lord tells us in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. Jesus says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus also says in Mark 8, verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Jesus says the life we ought to live is a life that trusts in God. And so in our text today, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4, the writer says, For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope, for a living dog is better than a dead lion. Look here, the lion is seen as the most ferocious beast in all of the animal kingdom. At the time of the text, the lion was the most admired and feared animal in the ancient world. The lion was seen as a powerful, majestic animal who was looked at as the king of the beasts. When the lion roared, every creature feared him. When the lion roamed, it was hard to escape him. The devil is defined as a roaring lion. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Everybody respects and fears the lion. 
On the other hand, in the Old Testament time, the dog was seen as a despised animal. Dogs didn't have the comfortable, cushy life like they have today. They don't get it. Listen, back then, they didn't go to the sauna. They didn't go to, you know what I'm talking about. Dogs didn't have that kind of life back then. Back then, dogs were, the most, were mostly scavengers that roamed in packs. They were filthy and dirty animals. While the lion was held in high esteem, the dog was seen as a low down, disgusting creature. But our text tells us it's better to be a low down, disgusting dog who is alive than a powerful, majestic lion who is dead. If anyone ever calls you a low down, dirty dog, tell them thank you. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. Our text says, for to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Listen, whatever your circumstances are, whatever your situation is, you could be in the poor house, in the jail house, or in the dog house. You could be on your bed of affliction or even on your deathbed with the doctor declaring there's nothing he can do. But as long as you still are alive, as long as you have life in your body, to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. How many know that sometimes you have to lose everything to know where to place your hope and your trust? Too often, <clears throat> people put their hope and trust in the wrong things. The lion's trust is in his ferociousness. The lion's trust is in his roar and in his bite. Unlike many dogs, a lion's roar is not worse than his bite. That went over your head right there. Y'all know that they be talking about that them little old dogs that they that they bark their bark is bigger than they bite. A lion's roar is not bigger than his bite. A lion's trust is in his roar and in his bite, and yet the dog is seen as nothing. A lion's bite is definitely worse than his roar. The lion knows that his roar works. A lion knows his ferociousness works. You ever seen the lions on TV, how they just walk through places? <laughs> you don't want to be where the lion is. The lion knows his ferociousness works. He knows he causes fear throughout the animal kingdom. And so because of this, his confidence is up to where he will even attack an elephant that is much bigger than he is. But when a lion is dead, his ferociousness is gone. His roar is silent and his bite is powerless. No one is afraid of a dead lion. If lions, if lions had the mindset of humans, they would be full of pride and arrogance. <laughs> Webster's Dictionary defines the word pride as a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. In other words, a prideful spirit is someone who is full of himself. Pride is the attitude that separates us from God. Pride is what got Satan banished from heaven. Pride caused Adam and Eve to fall in the garden. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, verse 18, pride goes before destruction, and a haughty or a high-minded spirit before a fall. Look here. Pride also is defined as a group of lions in a social unit. I don't think it's a coincidence that a group of lions are called a pride. And yet those things that give the lion confidence is what he does by instinct. But in a human being, it makes us prideful. Pride will cause you to put your confidence in those things that can't really help you if your house is not in order. If your life is not in order, it's better you be a living dog 
than a dead lion. A dirty, mangy dog is no match for a powerful, ferocious lion. But a mangy dog still alive is better than a dead, ferocious lion. What's the point here? As long as you are alive, you have the opportunity, you have the chance to do better. While the blood is still running warm in your veins, you have the opportunity to do better. You have the opportunity to have a good life only if you understand what a good life really is. If you don't know Jesus and the part of your sins, you can't have a good life. And the question is, will you choose Jesus or will you choose like the lion to hang out with your pride? While you're in the land of the living, there is hope for anyone who is alive. Someone turn to your neighbor, tell them, I'm glad to be alive. While you are in the land of the living, there is hope for anyone. While we are alive, you could be a hot mess on your way to a burning hell, but be glad that you're alive. You could be the mean as a junkyard dog, but be glad that you're alive. How many know that the Lord can turn anybody around? But in order for us to be turned around, we ought to realize that that hope is only good if we trust God. A life without God, a life without Jesus is a life lived in vain. Joshua says in uh, uh, Joshua 24, verse 15, he says, And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether it be the gods which your, where your, their fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the question that's put before you this morning, whom will you serve? You don't know Jesus. It's good to be alive. Because if you don't know Jesus, you have an opportunity to know him right now while the blood is running warm in your veins. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Yesterday is gone. You may not see tomorrow. If you don't know Jesus, it's a good day to be alive. But I want to let you know, if you do know Jesus, it's a good day to be alive because you get another opportunity to bless and praise God for what he's done for you. Now I understand there's some folk in here going through something. I understand that there's some folk in there that's having a rough time, but you are still alive. And I'm here to tell you that God can turn it around. And then you ought to be glad that you're here, that uh, you're still alive. Because you get another opportunity to come into the house of prayer. You get another opportunity to come into the house of praise and give honor, glory, and praise to the God of your salvation. If you don't know him, you have an opportunity to come into the house of prayer and give God your heart. Give the deacon your hand, but give the Lord your heart. Amen. How many know that it's a good day to be alive? Yes, Let me explain why it's a good day. Because Jesus came through 40 and two generations. Jesus took nails in his hands and nails in his feet. Died on Calvary's cross, went to the grave, but early Sunday morning got up with all power that anyone that is alive on this day, you are glad, you ought to be glad to be alive. For those of us who die in the Lord, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To live is Christ, but to die is gain. But we ain't in heaven yet. And so since you are here, you ought to bless God because you are still alive to praise him on this side of the road. To God be the glory for the marvelous things he has done. Someone ought to say amen. Someone ought to bless God. Someone 
turn to your neighbor and say it's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. But we won't be so remorseful that we won't understand that everybody in here may not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. When we wake up in the morning sometime, we're feeling like uh, this is a bad day. But it's a good day because the Lord woke you up. When we wake up in the morning, we should be prideful to think that, thank God for doing for us that he didn't do for others. There were some that didn't wake up that morning. There were some that just don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. But we are prideful to know that God is our Lord and Savior. And we thank him. We thank him. We thank you, Lord. Maybe, just maybe you may have a friend that's sick and shut in. Someone who needs prayer. Maybe even you. But we won't be so careful to miss this moment for you to be able to come to Christ. You may ask yourself the question, how do I do that? First of all, I must admit that I'm a sinner. Then secondly, I must Believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. And I must confess that he is our remedy or my remedy for my sins. So the doors of the church are open. And if you or someone you know needs prayer or needs to be saved and come to, come to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, come to Jesus. He is our remedy. Thank him for what he does for you each and every day. Bless him for keeping you. Believe that he is our savior. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Come to Jesus. You know, you may, be, you may be thinking about that person next to you, but that person next to you can't save you. You have to be saved yourself. Understanding that God will keep you. He will bless you. Come to Jesus. Come to him. Move self out of the way and come to our Lord and Savior. Thank him for waking you up this morning. Thank him for keeping a roof over your head. Thank him for a passion, portion of health and strength. Thank him. Oh, it's so wonderful to be able to be in the house of the Lord and praising God. Will you come? Will you come? And ever, all that he's done for you. We have a few that's come this morning, and, we, and we're going to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We thank, we thank you for those who have come up this morning. We thank you, Father, for those who didn't come but wanted to come. Father, we thank you for a portion of health and strength. Father, but most of all, we want to thank you for Jesus. Father, we ask that you continue to bless those that's in the sound of my voice. Sick and shed and bereaved families, Father. Bless our friends and foe, Father.
keep them as only you can, Father. Because we know you are the remedy for all things in the world, Father. Father, we, we just want to say thank you. We praise you. We lift you up, Father. We want to sing hallelujah to your name, Father. Father, we thank you. If I had 10,000 tongues, Father, I couldn't thank you enough. And Father, at this particular time, we ask that you bless those who need you, Father. Bless those who don't need you, Father. Continue to look over them, Father. Father, bless our pastor. Bless his first lady. Bless our, our members, individually and collectively, Father. Father, look over New Hope. Continue to bless it as only you can. And Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory because you are worthy to be praised, Father. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. My God. Let the church say amen. amen. God bless you. All hearts and minds clear, we're going to ask that you would stand for our benediction. Thank God for all of you that, that came out. Um, let's continue to pray for one another. If someone calls you a low down, dirty dog, Tell them thank you that God ain't through with you yet. <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Thank you, Father, for keeping us from last week to this week, from last night to this morning, you kept us alive. It was not because of our exercise. It was not because of our medication or our taking our vitamins. It's not because we did everything right and kept every commandment, but you kept us alive. You gave us physical life, but even more important, you gave us everlasting life. You looked beyond our faults. You saw our need. We know that we haven't done everything right. We know we've done things we should not have done. We know we left things undone. But in spite of us, you looked beyond our faults and saw our need. Thank you, Father, that you kept us alive. Thank you for one more day, for one more opportunity, even to come into the house of prayer where we can give you glory, honor, and praise. Now, oh God, as we prepare to leave this place but not your presence, give us traveling grace. Keep us, Father, as we go to and fro. And when it's yours to call and ours to answer, give us a place around your throne where Every day will be Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. That we will praise you throughout all eternity for the marvelous things you have done. We bless your name by the...